I mean, the running back really doesn't even do much, and he just gets completely shook and gets open by like five to ten yards easy. You can see this release angle is just ridiculous. He just runs right around it. He's open right away. This receiver is going to win every single time right off the line. He's getting about five yards of separation, and it just makes for a very easy one-play touchdown against his defense. So I can really throw to either route, as really both of these receivers can score against just about every single defense in the game. And we have a one-play touchdown catch-and-run opportunity to both of these receivers. <laughs> For the fastest, cheapest, most reliable coins on the market, check out my coin sponsor at MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT to get 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff with the Mad Cheese as always. It's Friday, so you guys know what that means. I'm going to give you guys a full breakdown of an offense or defense, which I've been doing for the pretty much the entire season of Madden 24. Uh, as always, though, if you guys want me to continue this series, please make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button and let me know in the comment section as I plan on doing this every single week, as long as it gets good views. I find it's best to put out these long-form type of videos going into the weekend so you guys have more time to watch it, whether you're off Friday, Saturday, Sunday, whatever time you guys are watching this video. But these have seemed to work very well over the weekend Woo! so today i'm going to use a new playbook as always the playbook that i'm showing you guys or the scheme that i'm showing you guys is going to be in gameplay coming up uh and this is probably my favorite offense i'm in the ravens which is a playbook that i'm waiting to use because i know a lot of people want to see me use the niners but i've been using the niners quite a bit i really want to use get to the ravens at some point because this is probably my favorite offense as there's just so many unique offenses in this playbook formation i'm going to show you guys today is the normal y off close now this particular formation is probably in like 10 to 15 playbooks so whatever your favorite playbook is there's a pretty good chance that this will be in it but the normal while off close has a ton of really good plays more plays than i can fit in my audibles which i'll show you guys next as i always like to show you guys my setup as if i were to run this in game even though i also will show it in gameplay but like i said i make these videos so that i can link you to these full breakdowns from whatever gameplay that i put or vice versa if you want to see this in gameplay i'll have links in the description but the three passing plays that i think are the most critical to have in your adjustments at all times are going to be the double slant the y stick dig and the escape because these are all have multiple one play touchdown setups which is why I like these plays. It's why I like this offense because you can attack from the right side or you can attack from the left side. Uh, the last play is going to be the inside zone because you always want to have a run play in your arsenal to keep your opponent honest. And then the fifth play for me would change but I would typically come out in the mesh spot. I also have things like the power read, the red zone scissors. Um, there's a lot of really good plays but every pretty much every play on this screen right here would be an option for my fifth play but the mesh spot would be the one that I would use the most every once in a while i might switch up with the red zone scissors but that's you know that's random it my typical five play setup would be always coming out in the mesh spot with all that being said though like i always do i'm going to start off with the run plays and i'm going to show you guys the dink and dunk plays i'm going to show you guys the one play touchdowns we're going to start off with a very simple play in the inside zone now before i get into the video as always if you guys want more help on offense or defense you can instantly download these or any of my ebooks simply by clicking links in the description or the top pin comment now when it comes to the inside zone there's not really a ton to go over you typically want to run this when you're seeing a look where there might not be you know i have I have six blockers on my line, so I got six guys here. I could run it against this, but if I want to give myself a little bit of an advantage, I can motion this guy across. And now, against zones especially, if it was a man coverage, the guy would have followed. But since nobody followed, I know it's a zone coverage. Now I have a one-man blocking advantage because that B receiver should try to help out and get to the next level, maybe on a linebacker or something like that. As you can see right there, he holds the linebacker off, which that guy would have been in my way otherwise. So, like I said, this look, I typically wouldn't even run it. If, I, if they have six in the box like this, I typically wouldn't run this against this look i typically would probably pass but there'll be a lot of looks a lot of times where um you know maybe motion this guy across will create uh, a little bit of an advantage here we have a man coverage so that doesn't make a ton of sense but there's a lot of looks where you can motion somebody uh, to get an advantage against man coverage i find it might be best to motion this guy in because it still gives you that second blocker but it does also bring that guy in so there's not really a ton of adjustments you can make against man coverage but like i said i mean you see there the man coverage did work out because those guys are going to run fake routes and a lot of times they'll pull the defenders back you also got a lot of what i would consider trick plays things like the rpo zone stick this is a play here where i'd probably just treat this like uh, a run play it's kind of more like an outside zone as you can see right there it's an auto handoff you don't have to hold the button or anything like that but it's uh, similar to the inside zone, but it kind of goes out a little bit more. But you also have some options here when it comes to the uh, the the B and the RB route. If it's a zone coverage, as I try to I try to wait, because you can see the auto handoff can kind of get in the way anyway. But uh, you do have the option to throw to these guys, but it's like you have to do it so quickly, it doesn't even feel like it's really an option realistically. Because <laughs> I was trying to hold the button there the entire time. You might be able to get out to this guy here, which is really only going to get open against zones. 
but you do have a secondary option as I, I try to throw to the b route you really have to um have to get out there quick and it's like i said it's, it's, it's riskier than it's really worth so to me if it's a zone you can throw it to the tight end if it's a b receipt if it's a man coverage like this here's a man coverage you can throw it to the out route but you can see it's so difficult to even complete that pass like i said i would mostly just treat this like a run play with the option of the tight end if it's a zone coverage you also have uh the rpo zone peak and i know a lot of people like to run rpos it can be very tricky we're going to pick that this is another look i mean you could really run this like a run play i don't really have to, to do anything it auto hands off but it's also a very good play when it comes to the bubble screen and decide whether or not you want to run to the bubble screen you really only have to watch the cornerback in front of that receiver if he floats in or doesn't move at all like right there you can just bubble screen that out and get a nice little catch and run very hard play to stop all rpo plays are very hard to stop you also have the b receiver but i don't think that that once again i think that's one of those reads that's not realistic because i tried to wait till he crossed i mean if i have like an immediate like right there he has a defender right in front of him if i try to throw that right away there's a good chance i'm throwing it right at that defender as we actually did complete that but like i said it's another pass play where i think it's just too risky the only way i would say that is if, if that if that uh, defender that's kind of in front of him wasn't there because you can see how you can jump that. You know what I mean? If he's not there entirely, if he if there's if there's an inside release with no with no problem, like I don't know, maybe if I move Andrews over, maybe it'll change it. Like I said right there. Now I feel a little bit more comfortable throwing to that B receiver because he's got inside leverage and you can see we're still getting, you know, knocked the ball out. So it is what it is. That's probably not really part of the restructure. I would say it's best to run it or to just watch if the uh, cornerback in front of the uh, the bubble screen you know, stays home like he did there, then I can just swing that out. But if he drops down into man coverage, and that means he's gonna, he has a chance at, you know, making a play on that, which I'll try to make a mistake here. As you can see, that's a man coverage. He's gonna cut you for a loss. Sometimes you might even be aggressive enough to pick the ball off. So really easy read on whether you wanna hand it off or run it. You just gotta watch the defender. Here he actually blitzed. That's gonna be even better, as now we have a one-on-one -on -one and we're gonna give him more space. So if somebody likes to blitz their cornerbacks, that's definitely a good way to go. So that's it for the run plays. There is only really one dink and dunk play. Every play here, after that it's going to be a dink and dunk play and a one play touchdown but the only play that's a one play that's just a dink and dunk with not really any one play touchdown capabilities is going to be the mesh spot and i guess technically i probably could create a couple of one play touchdowns which i will go over at the end of this like i said this play doesn't necessarily have one play touchdown capabilities but the running back does so we'll get to that in a minute but this is a very simple play it's very hard to stop there's not a lot of defenses that can really stop this play if you run it correctly the running back is typically open right underneath i can throw that right away just get that out and you can see there i actually got a shovel pass animation as uh jj watt i think got a piece of it but uh, but yeah i mean that's something that you can do as you can see here if he turns up the field i can usually go to him if i can throw him underneath right away against zones but after that i mean the running back isn't as unstoppable as the drags the the drags is really the way you say you can see right here if it's a zone coverage i can get it out right away and get a good five six yards something i see people do on the goal line quite a bit but that's one read that's a read kind of by itself after that i'm kind of just reading both the drags and the b route the b route the comeback route over the middle which typically only comes in handy when you're playing against an opponent that will chase the drags a lot of times people will chase these drags and that will get the b route open but the computer's not necessarily going to do that as much but it does have some one play touchdown capabilities too so let's go and let's pick that play again and on defense we're going to start off with tampa 2. all you really have to do for this play is motion his running back out and put the b or a receiver which would be better on a streak you lose your double drags but you can get that right back by dragging the b route once again and doing this that's all you really got to do in the rb route here is just going to get around and that's why i have my fastest running back now whether it gets a one play touchdown or not probably gonna have to beat that safety I'm not saying that necessarily is going to happen too easily but it's definitely a big play even if it's not a one play touchdown you could also put this b route on a flat and that will help to get that cornerback down quicker allowing for that throw but you can see how that throw he actually ran to the sideline sometimes a running back when you throw that he hasn't turned up the field yet can kind of mess things up as you can see right there he kind of ran to the sideline and got a weird animation so you got to wait for him to actually turn up that sideline or else he'll kind of run it into the sideline and like i said then it could just be a big play but it's still a, a decent play against cover two now i neglected to mention that the a route can also be a big play go ahead and i'll do this one more time because i can throw it to the a route as well if he has enough speed to beat that linebacker because you can see as long as he gets past that linebacker the safety can't really commit to either inside route or outside route and that will make the tight end a very easy play 
unless your opponent does a deep middle third adjustment, which a lot of people like to do when it comes to that particular style of defense. This wheel route also has a lot of success against uh, man coverages, so I'm going to flip that, and I'm going to run it against uh, cover one hole. Against cover one hole, or really any man coverage, I find it's best to run it from a hash mark to the short side of the field. And that's because this linebacker typically can't transition as well from the short side. And I'm surprised I even completed that because it said poor accuracy. But you can see how the safety's nowhere in play because he's reacting to the streak on the other side. And you don't necessarily get this look if you run it from a hash mark to the open side of the field. Although I will go ahead and I'll try that. If you're gonna do it this way, I find it's best to probably motion this guy in because you want him to, you want the safety to react to that a little bit more. And you can see how, like I said, this time he's gonna turn and run with him a little bit better and he just makes a play on it. So like I said, it's better if you run it from the other side. If you run it from the short side, no adjustments. All you gotta do is wait for this guy to turn up the field and you can see how he just runs right past him. I think he's being faced by a cornerback there, but it still doesn't really seem to matter. The pressure really made that play too. So I'm gonna do that one more time. I can still make that motion. As you can see, I just have to wait for him to turn up field and this guy just can't hang with him. And I'm not quite getting a one play touchdown, but you can see how easy that is against cover one. So that's it for the dink and dunk plays. There are still some dink and dunks to go over. I'll go over what's probably my favorite play in the entire formation, which is the escape play. I'm going to pick that. Then on defense, I'm going to go to pick random because there is a lot of dink and dunk to be had here. Now at this play, you really have concepts on both sides, the left and the right side. That's one of the reasons I like this offense is there's so many different concepts on both sides of the field that you can really attack. Uh, with this particular play, though, the easiest one is probably the running back because the running back is going to run something that really gets open against any man or zone. You can see there, I can throw it before it breaks out as he kind of curls in there, or I can wait till it gets outside. Against zone coverage, it probably makes more sense to throw it early. As you can see, I can kind of treat that like a little check down over the middle. Or, like I said, against man coverage, a lot of times that'll be covered, and you'll have to wait till it gets back outside. Although there, it looks like a cover one, and they're kind of they kind of double teamed in there. So you have to be aware of that. But otherwise, this route really gets opening. It's just about anything. Uh, you also have the tight end, the A receiver. Although here, it looks like we have an obvious man zero. So I'm going to go to the other side because I'm going to want something quicker than what that running back is going to be able to offer. And motioning this guy in and putting him on a five-yard out route is going to create a bench concept, which will really get open against either one of these routes. You know what I mean? Like if it's a cover zero, this corner route is going to destroy it. And corner route actually does really good against most man coverages, which I'll show you in a minute. But you can create that bench switch concept on the uh, short side at any point in time. I could also put them on a streak if I want to pull back a safety, but like I said, I'll show you that in a minute. And you have a really good concept on both sides of the field. It's a high-low concept on both sides now. You got the X route and the Y route on the left, and on the right side, you got the running back and the tight end. The tight end pretty much works best against man coverages or zone coverages, so you can see right there, they're converging on it. I'm trying to force it to the tight end. The tight end probably gets open the least out of the, th out of the four, but I'm going to try to force it over there as a lot of times, you know, like I said, man coverage right there. Boom. That's a really good man beating route. Just a 10 yard out route. I'm going to pick that again. I'm going to start off with cover two. So against cover two, you're going to want to run it from a hash mark to the open side of the field because you've got a couple of different options here. You can work the short side here, which is the two receivers. I can motion him in. And instead of putting him on an out route, I can just put him on a streak. Doing that will pull the safety back to the point where this Y receiver should have an easy catch and run above the cornerback and outside the safety. You can also split the safeties with the B receiver. I find it's best to motion this guy out and put him on a streak and then put the Y receiver on a 10 yard out route. I'll block my running back because I'm trying to hit a one play touchdown here. But doing this will spread the safeties apart as much as it can and get that B receiver open over the top right through the middle. As you can see, uh, linebackers typically can't cover or hold up against that type of play. Now, all the one play touchdowns I'm gonna show you from that side of the field that I just showed you, the B receiver, can be duplicated with the red zone scissors. Has a lot of one play touchdowns too, but like I said, I, I'm gonna show them all through the escape play, so there's no real reason to show it twice. But this running back route here and the tight end is a good concept. You can see how this route here can beat man coverage, but it takes a little while. It's a big play though. That's one of the, the benefits of it. Um, is it is at least a, uh, a big play if you have time in the pocket. As you can see right there, that guy, I mean, it's a big play the running back especially is, is that route really just poops on defenders. This is the look you're looking for here. As you can see, he's in coverage, but he just doesn't know what to do there. He just gets shook. I mean, the running back really doesn't even do much, and he just gets completely shook and gets open by like five to 10 yards easy. So if I'm calling a play like this, it's typically going to be because my opponent's in a man coverage or even a zone here. As you can see, those two routes do split the zone uh, depths and create space. So back to the one play touchdowns from the escape play. We'll go ahead and we'll continue with cover two man. Cover two man is going to be the same thing. I can split the middle or I can motion this guy in one more time and put him on a streak. And you can see I already have outside leverage against that cornerback. I'll go on a smart route to shorten it. 
But based on the fact that it's outside leverage, he's going to win very easily as this cornerback is just nowhere near where he needs to be. And then you can see, once again, it's a big play. Might not be a one-play touchdown. He might be a little bit closer, maybe 30 to 35 yards out, but a very big play. This play can also be a one-play touchdown against man coverages like cover one and cover zero. So let's go and let's pick cover one hole. This play can also have success against cover one if you run it from a hash mark to the short side of the field and put the tight end on a streak just to pull back the coverage. That's all you really got to do. And the B route will eventually cross and be a very big play. As you can see, that route just does a very good job against man coverage as we barely get the touchdown. That same setup can also have success against cover three. So we're going to pick cover three sky. Against cover three, just run from a hash mark to the open side of the field and put the X receiver on a comeback route to hold the cornerback down. And I'm going to put the Y receiver on a slant or a drag. For a check down, then I'm going to put the A receiver on a streak. That's what i got to do. I'm going to block the running back too because I'm going to want extra pass pro because i got to wait for this B receiver to cross the safety there. As you can see, the cornerback followed the whole way, but we still got it because the cornerback's still trailing. Play can also have success against cover zero, so we're going to pick Overstone Brave. Against cover zero, I already showed you one of the setups where I can just motion this guy in. I'll put the running back on a check and release, but I'm going to smart route the wire out one more time. As you can see, I have outside... Uh, you know, have outside leverage. So if he has that, if you throw it in the break, you're going to have a pretty easy one play touchdown every single time against cover zero. And you can see if you make that motion and you have outside leverage, this receiver is going to win every single time right off the line. As you can see, he's getting about five yards of separation and it just makes for a very easy one play touchdown against his defense. The B receiver also can get open if you put the tight end on a streak and check and release the running back. Uh, but the check and release running back doesn't necessarily, um, you know, always pick it up to give you, uh, you know, enough time for the throw. But you can see he did there. That was a good pickup as we get an easy uh, one-play touchdown over the middle. As really both of these receivers can score against just about every single defense in the game. And this one right over the middle is a very easy one-play touchdown as well. Also has a lot of success against cover four, which is really the only defense I got left. So let's go and let's pick cover quarters. Against cover four match. It's really best to work this receiver from the, the the other side of the field. Motion him across, put the Y receiver on a streak, put the X receiver on a curl. And that's all I really got to do. I'm going to block the running back, though. But uh, the B receiver, as long as I can buy time, it just gets completely forgotten in coverage. As you can see, he's really supposed to be covered by the safety all the way across the field. And that's the benefit you get from making that motion. This play works because we got three receivers to the one side. And by the time that safety realizes his responsibilities on the left side of the field, it's too late. He goes in the full sprint. But this guy's already wide open to the sideline. There's not going to be any user over here either. As we get another easy one play touchdown against double coverage this time. Play also has success against cover four, which I'm not even entirely sure that this playbook has. But... We'll go ahead, we'll try to find it through zone coverages as we do have a 3-4 drop. So let's go ahead and pick cover four. Against cover four, run it from a hash mark like this to the short side of the field, motion this guy in. And then I'm going to put the Y receiver on a drag and the X receiver on a curl. And that's going to create the concept that I need for this B route to cross. As I'm really just waiting for this B route to cross this uh, safety here. As you can see, he's just out of position. Then we have a, a slight throwing window to the corner. But bottom line is this is a one-play touchdown against every single defense in the game. When it comes time to make that throw, you really want to make it when this guy's parallel with the safety. Or even maybe a little before. As you can see right here, he's running backwards. He's not paying attention to me. He's paying attention to the receivers on the other side of the field. And I'm probably already throwing the ball. As you can see, it's out of my hand. So you can see it. I'm throwing that a little bit earlier. I'm at least anticipating it because he's sprinting backwards. He must be worried about somebody else because he's not worried about this receiver as he sprints to the corner of the end zone and gets a very easy one play touchdown. So that's it for the escape play. Like I said, that's probably my favorite play. There's really only two more plays, the double slant and the Y stick dig. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to start off with the double slant as i'll go back to nickel and pick tampa two again it's cover two running from a hash mark to the open side of the field and motion out andrews that's all you really got to do i don't have to make any other adjustments uh because the the b route here is going to do a good job of pulling that guy inside while i can also work this uh this guy outside this tight end on the wheel routes he gets open about the cornerback if you want to work the center of the field just run from a hash mark to the open side of the field once again motion out the tight end put him on a fade i'll block my running back for extra pass pro and then i can put the y or the x round a 10 yard out route to split the safeties it really doesn't matter as the b receiver here is going to have the most opportunity now based off the fact that that safety can't really commit to him based off of the streaking tight end outside so there's two options against cover two how about cover two man let's go and let's pick double slant again and we'll go and pick cover two man this time since I'm already on the hash mark, I'll do the same setup I just did because it'll work the exact same way. Block the running back this time because he's not really going to get open anyway. And I just have to buy some time for that B receiver as the running back can help pick up. And you can see how Flowers here can get open once again for another very easy one-play touchdown against cover two man. The wheel route setup works the same way though, so I'll go ahead and I'll do that. 
got my slanting check downs. Although this A route here, like I say, is gonna work around in the way that just makes it a very glitchy release for a very easy easy play once I motion him out. You can see this release angle is just ridiculous as the, the linebacker tries to press and just runs right around it. He's open right away. I mean, I could throw it immediately and get a huge catch and run from any point right off the line as we get a very easy big play. Play also has success against man coverages. We'll start off with cover one hole. Now the slants beat any man coverage, but this tight end could do a good job too. If you wait for him to turn up the field, when he bumps the receiver, he typically gets enough separation. You can usually body people because your tight end's usually larger anyway. But there's a much better route to be had here, and that's the B route. I'm gonna motion this guy across one more time, put him on a, ch or a smart route just to make it shorter. Then I'm gonna put the A route on a streak. I'm also going to block the running back. And you'll see how this B route here is very good against man coverages as it bumps into the cornerback once again and gets what's almost a one-play touchdown. I'll call it a one-play touchdown. You can also put the tight end on a streak, run it from a hash mark to the short side of the field and motion them out. And that will help to pull that safety over once again so that the B route can cross the field. Although I meant to put that running back on a, on a pass block. As you can see here, we get a bad throw, but we still make it happen with an inaccurate pass as he was wide open regardless. Cover zero is pretty similar. So we'll go ahead and we'll pick that again. And then on defense, we'll pick the Overstone Brave. With this setup, I just need some check and releases. I can check and release the running back and the tight end for better blocking. And the B receiver, they'll hold their targets, but the B receiver will typically get open. But it's best if you motion them across the way I was with the cover one. Same way, motion this guy across, put him on a smart route. Once again, time is of the essence, so you don't want him you know, taking his time. And this route will have the exact same success as this route is really just, you know, cover zero just doesn't cover as well deep. But making that motion will make this route get open very easily. So that's it for that play. The last play is the Y stick dig. So let's go and let's pick that. On defense, we're going to start off with cover two once again. For cover two, make that motion one more time. Motion this guy in, put him on a streak. And the Y route's going to be the play. But I'm also going to put the A route on a drag and I'll block the running back. The A route on a drag is going to pull that cornerback down a little bit quicker as the goal is going to be to throw it when he, uh, you know, before he turns around. As you can see, we get a big play. We're not always going to be a one-play touchdown. Now, if you run it from a hash mark to the open side of the field and put the B receiver on a 10-yard out route, you'll notice that you can really throw to either of these receivers. I mean, the Y receiver is still going to get open. As you can see, it's it's a little bit of a tighter window now based off the fact that you're from, you know, you're condensed. But... The B receiver, or the uh, the X receiver is going to be a much better play now. So let's go ahead and let's do that adjustment again. You see, I'm just waiting for the X receiver to cross, and now he's much a much better play. So it really depends on where you are on the field, what hash mark you're running from. I would say the full setup would be to always put the B on a 10 yard out route and just leave this like this. And you really have either option because the Y receiver can be a play. Uh, it's just the sideline is probably the bigger issue from from the hash mark like it is. But like I said, I could probably run that from the other side so that I have both options available. So the full setup to have both of these guys' options uh, would be to just 10 yard out route on the, on the B route, drag the A route, pass block the running back. And now I really have either option. Although you can see the cornerback there did make a play or did try to make a play. He didn't really bite on the drag. But you can see they're both capable of a one play touchdown. So I can really throw to either route as this route here is gonna get open above the cornerback. As you can see, we get a very easy play. But the crossing route is wide open as well. As you can see, the safety is not going to be anywhere near there to make a play either. And we have a one play touchdown catch and run opportunity to both of these receivers. So that's that's the video. If you guys want to see more from the Ravens playbook, I'll have videos popping up of some of the offenses and some of the plays that I've shown so far from this playbook. And look forward to gameplay next week. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.